This 1979 Triumph Spitfire was bought from a single owner with only 2,000 miles on her. All right, Jeffy. Um... Whoa! Oh! Back in the deep, dark corner was the 79 Little Triumph. But after getting married, the new owner realized this car was too small to be practical and put it into storage for 30 years. There's no room on this little car. You've got to remove anything to get to anything. Let's break this car out of its time capsule and see what she's got. Winning. Hey, Grad Squad, I'm Phil, and my mom, Kathy, has a 1979 Triumph Spitfire. Her and her dad bought it from an auction nearly 40 years ago, and from what I've heard, she had a ton of fun with it. But after getting married and kids on the way, the car was tucked away where it has sat for the past 30 years. Grad Squad, can you help my mom relive her youth once again and get the car back on the road? So this week we are going on the road to check out a car that could have a ton of potential or be a total disaster. We have no idea because it's been in storage for the better part of the last 30 years, some sort of storage container. We're hoping it's more like a time capsule versus a crypt. We're about to find out. All right, GPS set to beat Bruno to our destination and start route. <laughs> Is that why you veered off back there? I knew it. Bamboozled <laughs> again. But you know what? This should be fun, Christy. We're talking about a 1979 Triumph Spitfire. It's been hidden for over 30 years in the back of a storage compartment, which gives me all kinds of heebies and jeebies. I ain't gonna kid you. Kathy picked up this 1979 Triumph Spitfire a long time ago. Actually, long enough ago for it to be her first car ever when she was 21. Then she got a husband who was a little too big for it. <laughs> yeah, at 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 whatever she said he is, he's far too big to get in this little car. And honestly, you get to the point where it just wasn't practical for either one of them to go and use it. So fast forward to today, we've got a car that's probably got a little over 10,000 miles on it, sitting in perfect captivity for the last 30 years. Yeah, hopefully it's a, uh, a well-preserved time capsule. Sup, kids? <laughs> All right. I feel okay. like this is the location where the bad guy gets killed. Right. This is you know in, what I mean? The body is dumped over there somewhere. This the is theory. industrial. Look yeah. at this. <laughs> hey, Kathy, right? Hi. Hi. Bruno, Christy, Joe. Hi, nice to meet all of you. So your car is here, and it's a Triumph? 1979 Triumph Spitfire. Where exactly is the car? Yeah. See that dilapidated shipping container? It's right in, there. It's in there. Oh. I hold the car in as dilapidated as <laughs> a shipping container. I hope yeah. not, too. <laughs> all right, we'll follow your lead. All right. By the looks of the container, Bruno, you could probably just rip the door off. Yeah, it looks that way. <laughs> Where this car was stored was a bit unique. It was literally inside of a storage container. I mean, like, one that would go on top of a train. All right, Jeffy. Um... Whoa! Oh! I got to go check this That's out. That's my baby. This is your baby. The, the container was disintegrating a, around the car. Bruno, you know, took one for the team and decided that he's going to walk back there to find out what's going on. Hey, uh, <laughs> that looks like raccoon tracks on that car. Oh, yeah, it does. Speaking from experience, duck and weave, baby. <laughs> a cat like reflexes. Yeah. Holy cow. I mean, you can't tell much other than the fact that there's some shade of blue underneath here. There's dust this high. The tires are flat, wheels to the ground. I'm thinking it might be a cool car underneath here, though. The only thing I noticed is there's all kinds of animal tracks all over that car. So I'm like, Bruno, have at it. But listen, buddy, if you can't get out, I'm shutting the door behind you. You're on your own. I think this is Bruno's dream, right? He's trapped inside a container with a cougar and a car. I mean, <laughs> Kathy, how long has this thing been sitting here for? 30 years. Wow. Why don't we call the guys and let's get this thing hooked up. Let's drag it out of here and we get it. We might be able to just pick it up and carry it. <laughs> no, no, come on. You know, Bruno's pretty excited about I this am. little car. It's going to be a cool little car. <laughs> So how we're going to get the car from the back of the storage container through the front with flat tires, I don't really know. So we got to get something to put down on top of all those holes in the storage container and pull it through. Kathy had a friend that had a forklift with some steel plates that were able to lay down. OK, back it up. You know, we knew we couldn't work on that car in that boneyard. There was no good space, no coverage. Bring your back, boss. <laughs> You got it, baby. When you hit something, stop. So I told them that we had uh, a farm. It wasn't too far away, a little bit of a trip. Ooh. All right, easy. Wow, that <laughs> actually worked. I can't believe that actually worked. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Ain't she a beaut, Joe? 
<laughs> now, don't you go fall in love with her. We got to give her back to Kathy. <laughs> what do you think, Kathy? It's a mess, but at least it's in one piece. So now we have to get it to her farm. That's right. Yeah, well. I said we trailer it. Let's get Ronnie here with a trailer and we we'll get, get this thing going. Yeah, yeah, let's do, okay. it. do it. We got Kathy. Here's the car. Here's a piece of steel. Get it out of the container. You need a place to work on it? Let's go to the barn. <laughs> Apparently, she lives on a farm. She's got a huge barn that we can work out of. Perfect scenario to get this car there and start working on it. So once we got back to the family farm, we got the car set in a spot where we could take a deeper look. And honestly, based on the fact that it's been sitting for 30 years, it could have been in much worse condition. It's small, it's tiny, it's all there. It does look like we had some mice up here living for a while. But he was respectful to the rest of the engine. Look, he didn't even touch the plug wires. I see that. You know, you those are the original ones. Look at that. That storage container and those critters preserved that car actually pretty nicely. But the usual suspects were stuff that needed to be addressed. Brakes, rust, fuel system, all those kind of things that would deteriorate over the course of time. All right, now that we got the car where it needs to be, Kathy, you look wonderful, but you need to put on some grubby clothes because you're going to get dirty. I I'm ready. <laughs> All right, you ready to change? I'm dressing down. Yes, All yeah, right, I will. the work clothes. You know, over the years, we've had a whole cast of characters in terms of owners. Very few are women. And Kathy was as about unstereotypical of a car girl you would ever find. I mean, she had a pink cardigan on, she had dress shoes, she was a former math teacher, as sweet as could Step be. Step on up. <laughs> <laughs> Step on up. to you. Okay. How do you ride this? On day one, I you know, dressed up. I was ready for the occasion. You know, I like that outfit, but boy, the squad gave me some razzing about it. Oh, 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 hey, don't let her crash into the car, don't okay? Don't let her crash into the car. Ready? We got you. Woo! 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 She said backwards, I was like, oh, hell no. You're the first one ever to go backwards. All right, let's get together and talk about what we're going to do to this thing. Christy Joseph, walk over here in my office. Oh, yes. This thing's been sitting a long time. It might need just a smidge of work. Underneath the hood alone, everything's got to be drained, flush, clean, anything that's rubber, all the hoses, belts, it's all got to go. Well, let's talk about the suspension and the brakes. Probably have to do a little checking in that department and make sure things are A-OK -okay down there. With all that being said, don't forget we have the interior. I mean, I don't want to recover. I mean, it's it's so nice, it's original. I say we clean it up and save it. Yeah, maybe we might have to put a little padding left in those seats. They look like they've kind of sagged a little bit as well. I like the original look, but maybe just give them a little bit more life, you know? Same thing with the wheels. I think we got to keep those original too, just get some fresh tires on there. Well, you know, it is perfect for you, Christy. You know, it's a spit it's fire. Spit fire. Yes. Like I'm spit fire. <laughs> 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 All right, anything else you guys want me to add on here? Distributor cap. Distributor cap, got it. Rotor. Hey, Kathy, you want to give me a hand with this? Sure. I'll We've help got you. our working parts list here, okay. and it kind of keeps growing. But as it continues to grow, I'm already doing a little shopping on rockauto.com to okay. get everything that we need. Scroll down to Triumph, okay. 79 Spitfire, clicked on that. Got it. And then look at everything, how it's listed nicely that shows us what we've got available for this. And okay. we know that we probably need a new starter. So when I click on that, I've got one, two, three, four, five different starter options available. It's got Quite a little a info on each, yeah. the prices and everything. Not too shabby. And I mean, hey, we know we need a lot with the cooling system. So if we check that out, we've got radiator lower, upper, a couple different options for each of those. So I was hoping maybe you could give me a uh, hand. I would be glad to. With the parts list. Sure. To rockauto.com. Okay, I'm on it. Get us started on this list, and then I'm going to keep working with those guys and figure out what else we need. Okay, awesome. sounds good. Thank I'll you. work on it, you bet. After we got the car off of the trailer, the squad took a look at what it needed and the parts it needed. But the very first most important thing before anybody could work on it, it needed a good cleaning, and that was my job. So, Ooh. Kathy, we'd all decided that since you're the proud owner, you get to deal out it. All right. Get you a hose. You're excited power to see washer. the blue. I can't wait. Honestly, I can't wait to see it because this this bad shade of dust, and it's not doing it any favors. That's for sure. I got to pressure wash it and clean it, and it was so exciting to see that fabulous blue color come through all that dust. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> wow, look at wow. that. Wow, Mr. Blue. It looks beautiful. It's blue. We met at the baseball game. Her friend introduced us. I had a. Corvette at that time, and she had her little Triumph. Four years later, we got married, and then we eventually started our family. Both cars became not practical 
for a family, so we decided to take my car and trade it in for a four-door family car. But we decided to keep her a car. She's always talked about many times of bringing the car back out and getting it fixed up and just using it again. Kids would always ask me, no, can't we see that car? They knew about the car, but never really, only caught glimpses of it. My earliest memory of that car was exactly what you guys have seen, in a shipping container, sitting there with an inch of dust on it. I've never seen anything but that. My son, Philip, he's a fan of Garage Squad from way back, so he decided to take it upon himself, and he just submitted the application on my behalf. Oh, come on! And lo and behold, you know, Garage Squad came to the rescue. How's that? That looks good. All right, guys, let's get this thing on jack stands finally, and let's get the wheels off. Let's start tearing into this car. It needs a lot of work. Kathy, we're going to get these wheels off. We're going to get them sandblasted. We'll powder coat them, make them look like brand new. Oh, oh, man. I can't wait to see that. Can you believe that? No. <laughs> he must like you. I hope so. <laughs> After we get the car washed, the first thing I want to do is get it up on jack stands because what's the best part of every project? That's teardown. Stand by. Yeah, stand by. Teardown's the easy part. Two hours later. You got to get into suspension, get into brakes, start tearing apart the engine, start taking the interior out, get that convertible top off. It's the tiniest little wheel ever. <laughs> and most importantly, you can smell this old gash varnish coming from every crevice of this car for some reason. Right now, we got everybody tearing this thing apart, and of course, the first thing we want to do is rip off all these hoses, drain all the fluids, and obviously, we're going to rip off this carburetor and give a good rebuild. So there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of work to do, and we're just glad, side that this thing has got pressure washed, and it doesn't smell as bad now. Well, it's, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> a little lever here. Well, this is, in fact, a convertible, so I guess it would be nice if we got the convertible top to pop up. I think that's locking it, and now I think it's stuck. There, there go. it goes. All right. Take cool. this convertible back okay. a little bit, and oh, 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 oh. what no. is this back here? Oh. Look at these gems. These are straight out of 1979. That looks just about your size. This looks a little small, I think. I don't think so. I think you could fit into those. I think we're going to have to have a roller off. No, see, it says right there it's a 10. <laughs> That's not I'm good. a 10 and a half. It's a lot of roller skating, a lot of girlfriend trips. Those are kind of the miles that I put on, just road trip, girlfriend trips, you know, cruising around town. You know, so Kathy had this car when she met her now husband, Tom. And uh, it was some of the car that her and her friends went out and enjoyed and had a lot of fun with. And young girls in a little convertible car, I'm sure she got a lot of attention from the other guys. So it was kind of ironic that Tom wanted the car put away in storage. He says it was maybe too small for her to drive around safely with kids, but maybe it just he didn't want her getting all the attention she was going to get driving around in that little car. I don't know. I think Kathy's husband, Tom, was a little worried and put this car away 30 years ago because Kathy was a little spitfire herself running around town. Its house became the shipping container, but I never thought that it would stay there for right. 30 years. <laughs> I mean, I think this carpet's going to clean up pretty nice. Oh, look how nice that is underneath the floor mat there. Right? Like brand new. I think we can probably leave most of it and clean up the carpet and send the seats off, maybe get those cleaned up. I'm all about this easy job. <laughs> I know. I don't mind doing the interior this week. <laughs> Me neither. Me neither. All right. On to cleaning. We yeah. shall do. Right. There you are, sir. Thank now scurry off, sir. Thank you. Go grab your skates. Oh, let's take all this valve cover. I want to see. Mm -hmm. Check this out. I'm, in, I'm interested to see inside this a little more. I, I haven't been in one of these things in a long time. I wonder if there's anything even in there. Oh, you got the carb off? Well, I'm working on it, buddy. Oh, ain't them just lovely carburetors? Yeah. Look at Look at that! Oh, They're cute. So adorable. Look at that. Teeny tiny little engine. Joe popped the valve cover off. Valve cover. It's important to note that there's only one. Is this the motor that's used to start the big one? I'm just curious. I'm, you know what? Or is this all we got to work with? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's underneath that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how well they're doing underneath the car because I got them pulling out the clutch. Let's face it, it's been sitting there for 30 years. You know, when you've got a car this small, you think, oh, this is going to be a breeze. We'll just knock this thing out in a day or two. Just because it's small in size doesn't mean it's small in problems. 
What is this cable for? So it's tethered the cable to the frame. Why? Especially when you start getting a situation where you want to start taking stuff out. Because everything not only has been rusted in, in its place, and it's hard to get to, you've got to snap bolts off versus unscrewing them. We might have to just uh, break out the old sawzall and do this removal the proper way. Torch. You've also got a situation where everything is very tightly and compactly fit into a small space. So getting to one thing, it means removal of three or four others. You know what? I don't need a clutch. I think it's fine. I think it'll be just fine. Kathy seems like a trooper. Basically, what's making this so hard is the fact that everything is so well rusted in place. We're stripping the heads off the nuts and the bolts, just trying to get stuff loose. And everything is so tight because there's so no there's no room on this little car. You've got to remove anything to get to anything. I mean, we've got to take the entire exhaust out and this cable, for God's sake, just to get the trans out. Prime example is a transmission. We wanted to get it out of the car and make sure that it was in good working order. Ah, that thing broke right off. But to do that, not only do we have to get the drive shift out of the way, which is normal, but to do that, you have to get the exhaust out of the way, you have to get cross members out of the way, and then you realize you can't get the trans out unless you take the engine out with it. There you go. That boy, Ron. So already, we just took a big step back, and this little car already started fighting us. You gotta be me. I think I heard every profanity known to man shouted out by them <laughs> because they were getting so frustrated. It looks like it's gonna hurt, honestly. Winning. It was kind of a slow go getting some of the old stuff off, and they were just breaking bolts left and right. A few busted knuckles later, we got them out. Nice. Woo. Kathy lost the cardigan. She's got her t-shirt and boots on. She's ready to dive right in and get this project started. How's it coming? Do you need a hand? Nope. It just came off. You know, it's funny because Kathy jumped from job to job to just about help anybody out along the process. She said she coming in, she didn't have a whole lot of knowledge of cars and working mechanics, but she wanted to learn at every turn. <laughs> what better than I thought? Kathy. Woo. Got these teeny tiny itty bitty little rear drum brakes. So <laughs> cute, isn't it? Just adorable. It is adorable. <laughs> Look at that thing. So we can get those apart. And then, of course, it's definitely going to need some rear shocks that have got to be replaced because they're rusty, they're old, not even sure they're really working. We can get those out of there. There it is. Boom. The most graceful shock remover ever. <laughs> Way to Boom. go. Took we nailed a couple it. extra. But, you know, so now in we're going to repeat that process on the other side. All right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs>you know, Joe, these cars are nice and cute looking. You think it might be easy. Oh, it's this cute little car. It weighs 1,800 pounds. It'll be a breeze. But it makes three times the work because everything is crammed into such a small space, especially when it's been sitting and rusting for the last 30 or 40 years. Yeah, and you know what else doesn't help is we wanted to pull the trans in order to put in a new clutch, but it won't fit out the bottom. So motor and trans has got to come out together. But you know what? I mean, what's it really going to cost us? An extra couple bolts? Because... This is all gonna come apart anyway. Did you see me take out that exhaust? A couple bolts took about three hours. <laughs> an hour per bolt till you snapped it off. And the worst part is, is you can't get a bar big enough on to get enough leverage. You gotta use what my aunt gave you. You know what I'm saying, to get that out of there. We gotta put a new radiator in anyway, so this has gotta come out. And we just gotta get a cherry picker and hook to this. Well, you just wanna just grab we it and just do some curls and just get that thing out of there for you? Yeah, yeah. you got It'll this. It'll help clean in one piece. So we had no plans to pull the engine initially, but the fact that the frame rails were so tight, there is no way we could get the trans out through the bottom and had to come out, out through the top with the engine along the way. We beat the British once, we'll beat them again, Joe. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, we already have everything else tore apart. We're almost there. It's literally four more bolts. We might as well. We're gonna go more north. We and go. then we'll turn it, and then we'll come on. There we go, there we go. Oh, 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 oh. It won't go your way. Go away, because wait. that way we can get the motor out, get it up on the table. We can start checking things Ready? over with that. Oh, oh. Geez. Okay. And do a good inspection on the clutch and flywheel also. There you are. There you are. Oh, my God, that's small. It is small. So let's get off this monster clutch so we can <laughs> see the flywheels, clean up any rust or anything. Yeah, in there. Okay. Kathy, thank you very much for helping us clean up this motor. This thing looks beautiful, might I add. And, and it, of course, the interior you got looking nice, too. Hey, it is coming along. I like it. What's really neat is, like, this does look pretty good for being the original clutch, but we got it apart. We're going to put a new one in anyway. We got nice new disc, new pressure plate, so it's going to look nice. But the one thing I always want to tell everybody, this is your throwout bearing. This is what pushes on the clutch fingers to release the pressure plate. I don't care how many times you tear it apart. 
you should always replace this every time because if this bearing mm -hmm. goes out, you're gutting this whole entire thing just to replace this little bearing. Wow. So always put a new one in. They're cheap. Gotcha. Right? Hey, hey, and you're replacing it, right, Joe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm replacing it. All right, I thank, got the new one thank installed you. and thank ready you. to go. This build is not about modifying. This build is all about getting this thing back up and running, safe to drive for Kathy to go enjoy. So we're finally digging into these front brakes. And from what I'm hearing, I think Joe's got some uh, rebuild kits for these calipers. So hopefully he can get those things fixed up pretty nice for us. And then we can get into the front suspension on this thing. OK, ready? No. You gotta miss that bracket, right? I don't know. Oh. Turn. Stop Ooh. turning. Turn more. I'm turning. It ain't going. Are you hooked on that bracket on the bottom? I'm hooked on the bracket on the bottom. So once the motor was up on a table, the flywheel and clutch actually looked really good. So that being said, we luckily we just replaced the pressure plate and the clutch disc and everything was good to go to put back together. Let's clean this up. We're gonna take the valve cover off, give it to Kathy, let her clean it up, let her paint it. Okay. And then let's kind of doctor all this up with a little paint, make it look pretty before we put it back in. Look at that. Before I, I got into the picture, uh, Kathy and her cousins and her friends all used to go out with the car and go get ice cream and, and drive their little Smurf mobile, they called it, around town there and had a lot of fun with it there. Perfect. Yeah, I'll grease up the bearings and we'll get it slapped back on the car. All right, man. She wants to recapture those days again. We're gonna have the top down. It is gonna be, it's going to be my special car, only on special occasions, but I'm gonna drive it. Kathy, you wanna give me a hand over here? Sure, Ronnie. I wanna oh. get the gas tank out. Okay. Let's clean the trunk out. When we do that, I'll be peel this back, grab the wires, slide this baby out. Pull it out. It's good, because it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's it smelly. Stinks. All yep. right, let's get this stuff out of here. I know this is shocking, but a teeny tiny car with a teeny tiny engine also has a teeny tiny fuel tank. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be one of the easiest gas tanks. I think so. Not that I've changed many, but. <laughs> well, you know, fuel's been sitting that long. It starts to corrode and it starts to have buildup all inside of it. You wanna make sure that you just start fresh and clean and not have a problem you can't get fuel from the engine. Let me see oh, oh, there we go. You are the master. Where are we gonna go with this? Out. Outside. Out of the garage somewhere, yes. yes. I think it's not liquid, it's solid in there. Oh. The heck are you doing over there? So what I'm doing is, is you can't, you know, take this paint and just paint the intake. We painted the motor, it looks good, but you know, I wanna, you know, give it a little pizzazz, bring it back to life a little bit. So you get yourself a rag, you paint the rag, and you just keep dabbing, and as it dries, It'll also give it that textured look and it'll look like it's brand new again. See the difference between here and here? I wonder you're the boss. I, I try, mm -hmm. but I mean, mm -hmm. I got you fooled. <laughs>
You're welcome. Aw, she appreciates uh, that. I do. Yeah, and I, well, time somebody did. I know. <laughs> oh, man. It was just, you know, one thing after the next, and it was amazing to see how the car was just coming back all together. Look at that. Look at that paint Brand job. New. What it was made for. So, oh. Gorgeous. You all right, Cy? Si? Is this the trans cooler, or what is this thing? <laughs> It's for this little primer motor we've got sitting here. <laughs> got Not sure when we get the real motor in here, but. <laughs> so every day when we were done working in the shop or when she was done working in the shop, she would always talk about what had gotten done in the car, what was getting done. So we right. gotta compress this spring to put the shock in it. Our spring compressor is too big. This car's a little, all the parts a little. This is not the best way to handle this situation, but it's what we've got to work with. So. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, though, right? Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Let's just say after the crew left at night when we were having supper there, the conversations were pretty in depth as to what she really did and what she learned. She has uh, intensely learned a lot over all of this right here. It has been great. Just a flurry of activity, and it is go, go, go from here. Now I got this front suspension about wrapped up. I can get going on those front brakes, so that way when I'm done, Ronnie can start bleeding them up. So we're moving right along this morning and we're actually making some pretty good progress, but there's still a lot to do. Right now I'm putting on a fuel pump. We're gonna finish up the ignition system. And Cy and Bruno got the radiator put in. But the big thing that's gotta take place yet is rebuilding that carburetor. Now I want you to imagine what that, you know, old Zenith carburetor looks like inside after sitting for 30 years. So right now I have it soaking and there's gonna be a lot of cleaning to do and a lot of prep work and you know, hopefully I can bring that carburetor back to life because we are getting really close to getting this thing fired up. So while that's soaking, I'm gonna finish up some fuel lines and the fuel pump. That way everybody ain't waiting on me to start this thing. These teeny tiny little drum brakes are set and ready to go with the smallest shoes I think I've ever seen. I think the shoes on this are actually smaller than mine. <laughs> Maybe not, I have pretty small feet. First one went on. Things were a little slow go at first with this car, but now that we got some momentum going, it's really starting to fall in place. Got new brakes on, new disc brakes in the front, new drum brakes in the rear, new shocks. Engine is back in with a new freshened up clutch. Replacing the clutch master cylinder. I already did the brake master cylinder, but I know they're not ready for it yet, but I'm ahead of them a little bit, so. And a couple other things under the hood have been taken care of. This thing's really coming along. We're almost ready for fire up. I can't wait to see the car in its completion, start it, hear it, shift it, put the top down, let the wind fly in my hair. <laughs> all right, he can bleed his stuff. Hopefully it all works. So before we can put the new uh, fuel tank in, what we needed to do is get a couple parts off the old one, and one of them being this line right here. This is the supply line that's going to feed the engine. The problem we ran into is this doesn't want to come out. So it's a bit of an issue. We don't want to break it because I don't know how we can get another one in time. So what we're going to try and do is delicately, yet forcefully, try and remove this out of the tank. Oh, there we go. There we go. That wasn't so bad. Oh, except for that. You see that right there? That's what 30 years of solidified fuel looks like. So I'm hoping then we can spray this out with a little bit of brake clean or carb clean or something to try and break that down so we can actually get fuel to go through here. Because if not, we're gonna be searching for one of these lines. Like now. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Okay, we'll keep spraying this for a little bit, make sure we get it all cleaned out, and then we can transfer the parts over, and then Kathy and I can get this fuel tank in, so not too bad. Just a little old fuel sitting around. So next time you got a vehicle sitting that long, make sure you clean the fuel system. So I got the carb off the car and I'm tearing it apart. We're going through it, cleaning it up. But one of the things that make these old Zenith or SU style carbs unique is the metering valve that moves up and down inside these that control the fuel and the air mixture. It's kind of neat. You know, it's been around since early 1900s and believe it or not, they take oil. Believe it or not, a carburetor with oil, huh? Well, not only does this carburetor take oil, this carburetor also takes antifreeze. Mounts to the side is how it controls the choke. It may not look the prettiest when we're done, but we know the inside's gonna be right. 
and with any luck, this thing should run like a top. This style carburetor, SU or Zenith or Stromberg, etc., are pretty dependable. They've been around for a long time. We're gonna get this cleaned up, and it'll be dependable for Kathy on her Triumph, too. But I got a long ways to go because there is a lot of parts to clean, and uh, I'm gonna be here for a while. When we broke the time capsule on this 1979 Triumph Spitfire with all original parts, we had our work cut out for us. I think I heard every profanity known to man shouted out by them. We overhauled the transmission and upgraded the suspension. But there's still a long list of projects left to do. We are running out of time. Oh boy, Ron. It's a mess, but at least it's in one piece. We're doing everything we can to keep this Triumph from turning into tragedy. You gotta be kidding me. So we had some of our friends out this morning to get this new top on here for us because the back windows on this thing were pretty ratty. You couldn't even see through them. So I came out this morning, got it put on this frame for us. and give myself a little more room so I can work on this carpet. We didn't have too much work on the interior, but that convertible top had to be replaced. You know, the interior of the car was actually in surprisingly good shape. This is a car, it's low mileage. I'm talking like 13,000 original miles on this thing. And the interior is pretty much preserved need to get cleaned up, make it look presentable. But as far as that part is concerned, it was pretty much a no-brainer. Get a couple bolts in that, we'll to move on to the seats. All right, so I think the new fuel tank is now finally ready to put in. Kathy's been patiently waiting for me over here. All right, pull that out of the way. The fuel had been sitting in there for a long time, so it was an easy choice to just put in a brand new tank with new lines and not even deal with trying to rehabilitate the old one. Oh, All yeah. righty. Look at, look at that. Excellent. I can't drive home the fact enough how much Kathy wanted to get her hands dirty. And I got to give her a big hand because she was truly awesome throughout. So our fuel tank, Kathy, I think we've got it, other than this connection right here, which is not going to be easy. But I don't know if you noticed, I left the actual fuel cap, the actual filler in the trunk. Oh, yep. I Why got don't you it. Oh. Do you see what I'm seeing? Oh. <laughs> Do you that think while well, I wrestle that, you can try and clean that? Oh, you got it. Maybe I'm a wire it. brush or something over on the bench. OK. All right. I'll get it. When that filler cap needed to get cleaned out, she didn't just throw it to the curb. I mean, she must have spent hours soaking it and scrubbing it and getting it so it would work properly. It was in rough shape. I mean, it was. It had 30 years of corrosion built up. It was quite a eye awakening for Kathy there because she's never really had to work on anything like this. But she got her hands in there and, and enjoyed every minute of it. You know, you give Kathy a job and she just takes care of business. The girl doesn't play. Look at this. It is like brand new. The flap works, so now you won't have the venting of fuel coming out. And all we have to do now is put it in place. And I got Ronnie on the inside tightening down that clamp. Is it coming? Wait, it's a tight fit here, brother. Is it there, Ron? Uh, it is now. Nice. I like it. Bruno and Kathy, we were able to install the gas tank and bring it back to life, and it's all fresh, it's all new, so we'll have no more worries about, you know, fuel system problems with this car. You know what, I like that I can see you. I can see you clear as day, this beautiful top. It's, it's really a little nice. scary. Yes. All right, we're getting close on this thing, that's for sure. This project is pretty much almost wrapped up. We just got a couple things here and there, wheels and tires, the exhaust system, of course, the seats are missing. You know the phrase, chrome won't get you home? Well, that is the model for the 79 Triumph. So we did the same thing with the wheels and tires, kept it original. So we've got the original wheel that was sandblasted and powder coated, so it looks brand new on a new tire. It is not big in stature, but neither is the car, so it's a perfect match. I wanted to keep everything as much as original on the car as possible. And they are so sweet. They look like the original wheels and tires that were on the car when it came out of the factory. I'm going to grab this guy. I just couldn't believe it was coming back together so smoothly. All the parts that were laying around got all put back together, and it was so exciting. I think we're good. Cool. Kathy, who do you got here you brought with you? This is my son, Philip. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Phil. Hi. Well, it's a nice you show up at the last minute. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, come yeah. on. Bruno said it, not me. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking you and your dad were hanging out in the, drinking beers watching us work this whole time. We might have been. <laughs> we got to meet Phil, Kathy's son, and he's the one who's actually submitted the car. So I know this is going to be a cool experience for him because he's probably never heard this thing run. I think we're ready, Cy. Are we? No, I don't know. I got, I got some go-go juice here. Oh, ready? Yeah, well, just remember, stop, drop, and roll. Okay. Oh. That's a good 
good sign, kind of. Sounds good. Who's getting there? <laughs> yeah, boom. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh. Uh, Phil, this is some of our finer work. <laughs> yeah, <they're using> right <laughs> now. <laughs> they cranked the engine and didn't didn't really want to go and you know it needed some tweaking it needed something I, I don't know what but it needed something we put in that new ignition so yeah, it might need a handful of uh, adjustment there so size cranking it over and the motors wanting to pop off but it just seems lazy but then I dawned I mean we put in a new ignition system so none of that's gonna be right so we got to start from scratch we advanced the timing on it this is uh, gonna be somebody crank it while you do that that's always exciting well, this, this is going to be some a bucket of water to precision. Throw this is going to be some precision measurement for. There we go. Let's just oh. try it there. How's that sound? That looks pretty good. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to hold that can? No, I'm going to stand back here just to get Christy up in close person. No, 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 no. I need the shield of something. She was pretty excited. She was really excited, actually. It was, it was so sweet. I was so excited. I'm like, just let's just get everything put back together so I can take this car out for a spin. So Phil, this is the first time you've ever heard it run, right? First time, yep. What do you think? It's amazing. It's intimidating, right? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, did you ever think it'd be up running again? Never. 30 years, I thought, nope, it's going to the junkyard. <laughs> Us either. <laughs> Well, I'm telling you. The confidence you're building. You're going to be the shining star on the go-kart track. Those 11 year olds are going to idolize you. Like, who was that? I'm good, I'm good with that. Might be a little slow. Slow traffic stay to the right. I will. Oh, Thank you for the advice, Joe. It's a special bond that they all have, and I think that my mom actually fit in with them surprisingly. So it was very, very cool to see that from behind the scenes. Ready? Let's go race it. Are you driving this thing? Heck yeah, I am. Are you going to fit in it? I don't think so. Not with a seat. Listen, right? boy, it's too intimidating for me and Bruno to drive. I'm just saying that. All right. Let's get pint this thing size for the pint-sized car. It's perfect. If that's okay with you, Ken. That's great. I'm, I'm happy. Yep. I, I say we just pick it up. I say you're right. Yeah, okay. just easy. Ready? Ready? One, two, three. Let's get this thing off the jack stands, and what better way to do so than just lift it right off. <laughs> Aww. That's as strong as you guys have ever been. We dropped it on the ground, and Kathy was just ecstatic to see the car ready to actually be driven once again. I think she could see you know, the final result you know, coming into play, and uh, for her, it was a, truly a fun moment. It just needs a little bit of a cleanup. A absolutely, I can't wait. It looks great. <laughs> Even dirty, it looks great. So, Kingster, you get the uh, sponges attached in the appropriate areas to wash this thing down. So, I need my Speedo then? Yeah, ex absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, or or not. I don't know. It depends, it depends <laughs> on what kind of fan base we've got. We'll All find right. out. I'm, I'm basking in my feeling tall moment here, but I think I might need a seat to uh, drive this thing. Anybody want to give me a hand with that? Kathy? Oh, sure. Look at that. Oh, Kathy's you. got my back, girl. <laughs> I knew you had my back. Bad idea. The car is so small, you think we would have noticed the seats missing out of it, but apparently we were all in a hurry to get this thing out of the shop, you know, so the girls can go for a ride. Here we go. Got yep, it? I got it. All right. Just a couple bolts to get that down and that little electrical plug back in on the seat. This car is looking pretty good, Kathy. It is looking so sweet. Got the seats in. I could tell Christy was really excited because she wants to drive the car. And I don't blame her because I like driving that car too. I think that choice was made solely based on my stature. <laughs> Either way, I'm excited to drive it. Maybe pick up some boys on the way. <laughs> All right, cruising in the drop top. What a fun little car this is. I mean, I got the top down. I'm cruising around the cornfield. It's kind of like driving a go-kart, I'm not gonna lie, but at least it's a really classy go-kart. This little convertible couldn't be more out of place cruising around in the cornfields. I mean, like, <laughs> who would expect to see this little blue British convertible out here? Your Kathy had a lot of great memories in this car a long time ago, and I think she's got many, many more memories to make now that we got this thing fixed up for her. This car, it's peppy, it's a little stick shift, it's got the convertible vibe going, I got the wind in my hair. I'm digging it. The car sounded good, it handled well, and it's a nice little driver to have on a Sunday with the top down. It doesn't get any better. I'm away from the boys in the shop. 
<laughs> I can kind of see what Kathy's got going on with this thing. This is the perfect cruising car to get out of the house. Go, baby, go. Although Kathy's 1979 Triumph Spitfire was entombed, so to speak, in a storage container for the past three decades, she never gave up hope that one day she'd be back behind the wheel with the sun in her face and the wind in her hair. Although this was a little car, it was kind of a big project, and the list was certainly large as well. We had a lot to do to get this thing back up and running and looking good, too, but just a little spit shine, and we got this thing back on the road, and Kathy's ready to drive it again. That's right. It was a small car, but big memories, and hopefully after all the work Garage Squad did, she can go make some new ones. Well, you know what? Kathy put in a lot of hard work as well, and it shows. You guys ready to see this thing? Yeah! yeah. All right, guys, let's go. The excitement of seeing that door open and Kathy drive that car out was was out of this world. It was something that she's been looking forward to for a long time. I couldn't be more happier than what I am right now for Kathy. After I, you know, was able to get that car out and see all my family and friends, and some of them I used to take in that car, and it was it was a moment I will never forget. So what was it like to see your wife drive out in that car once again? Words undescribable, uh, it just ecstatic. Uh, it's something that she's been waiting for for a long time. She is going to be the talk of the town driving around in that thing. And I think kind of that's why you buried that thing, because you didn't like all the attention she was getting in that car. Yeah, I got a little point there, but I don't want to admit to it, though. So, <laughs> What do you guys think? You like it? Yeah. Well, this little car took a lot of work to get to this point. Christy, break it down. It did take a lot of work, Bruno. Thanks for reminding me. All right, well, we had to do a lot to this car, and especially since it was sitting for so long, one of the first things we did was touch on the suspension, those front and rear brakes, and of course, like I mentioned, the spit shine on that thing. We had to buff it out and make her look almost brand new again. That's right, and after we pulled out that massive motor and transmission, we put a new clutch in it, and we obviously did all new gaskets and rebuilt the carburetor, stuffed it back in, and man, does it run like a sewing machine. Well, that might have more power. It might have a little bit more. <laughs> but hey, we had to get fuel to that massive engine, and Kathy and I put a lot of work in getting that fuel tank in, as well as making sure that we modified the sound. We don't want to blow anybody away, right? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> the one wish she had was to have a top that she could see out the back. I don't know why, because no one's going to be behind you when you're driving this thing, but you can see out the back, Kathy. I can now. You're right, Bruno. Thank you. What do you think of your car? I love it. Dream come true. Well, she has been an awesome helper, a part of the Garage Squad from day one. You know what? You were a sleeper. I didn't think you had it in you, but you're tough. Well, in the beginning, I was intimidated. I didn't know much, but I was ready to go. Yes, you were. Yes, you What do you guys think? Yeah. You love it? Well, I can tell you, there is no need to be intimidated. If you've got a car that needs a little love, make sure you send us your submission to GarageSquad.tv or Christy Lee's Facebook page. That's all the time we got today for Garage Squad. We'll see you guys next time. Come check this thing out. Yes. All you, all you. Don't come to me when you see me out in public and say, really, Joey, a Spitfire Triumph? Listen, it's not always about the car. Sometimes it's about the story, and sometimes it's about the history that makes it the build just as important as anything. Oh, choose everybody back up. She's popping the hood. <laughs> oh, she wants to show off all that power. Now. Woo! Wait till you see oh, this girl. beauty. Over this week span, I've seen nothing but a smile from ear to ear from my mom. So it's she's just beaming with happiness, and it's really, really something special to see. I love it. Everybody's super excited about it, and we're all so happy for Kathy. I mean, she's put in some work on this project, so it didn't come easy. So, so you realize there's like an app you can have on your phone to track her just to make sure she doesn't get in any trouble. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put a GPS in her car. Oh. J go. James Bond style. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm happy and thankful to the Garage Club for bringing all the, all the uh, fun back into her life. I think this car is going to be like uh, one in the family. I want to thank Garage Squad and the whole crew. They're so special. It's fantastic to see all this, and I can't thank them enough for everything they've done behind the scenes, on the car, for everything for us. It's, it's really special. I honestly am going to miss them. I, I liked having them around, and I, am, I can't thank them enough.